What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be talking all about data cleaning. Now, data cleaning is an essential part of working with any data. And so this is a very core fundamental concept that anybody who works with data will need to know. As a data analyst, I've cleaned data in almost any way that you can imagine. So I'm very excited to talk about this topic. Let's not waste any time. Let's jump on my screen and take a look. All right, so let's take a look at what data cleaning actually is. Data cleaning is the process of identifying and fixing issues, aka dirty data, in your data to ensure it's accurate, consistent, and complete. Let's take a look at these patient names on the right-hand side really quickly. These are all my names, but just in different versions or variation. This is very dirty. So we have Alex Freeberg, Alexander Freeberg, Alex F, Alexander F, Alex Freeberg with a U, Alejandro Freeberg. These are all the same person. That's all me. But if you're looking at this in a database, it's going to consider all these people different. And so what we would have to do to clean up this data is we would have to make all of these names consistent and the same. Maybe we do that by saying, okay, all these people have the same date of birth. They're all male. They all have the same social security number. So with all of those things, we could say, yes, these are all the same person. We can make all of these patient names, Alex Freeberg with an E. That would really clean up this data a lot. Why do we need to clean data at all? What is the reason that we do this? One is to ensure accuracy because you're going to be giving this data to stakeholders or your boss or a customer, and they're going to expect that this data is accurate. But if you're giving them bad data, then they may make bad decisions with that data, and that's going to come back on you. Next, it improves efficiency. When you are working with clean data, it is 10 times easier to analyze and use that data in any way you need rather than it being really messy and really difficult to work with. Lastly, it builds trust. And stakeholders and customers and clients, they want to be able to trust that what you're giving them, the data that you're using, is actually accurate and complete. And so those stakeholders are really going to trust you if that data is clean and accurate and you can find insights with that data. Now let's take a look at some other examples of dirty data. And these are not all of the examples, but these are many of them. Here in this data, we have columns and rows like an Excel file. We have a name, a phone number, an email address, and an address. In each of these, you can see a lot of mistakes. Take, for example, in the name column. We have things like punctuation marks and abbreviations. These are the same person, just like we looked at in the example with my name. These are all the same person, but each of these records requires a different row of data because it isn't standardized or cleaned. Let's look at phone number. This one shows us missing data. And this is a very common one where you're collecting phone numbers and all of a sudden you just don't have a phone number. So you're missing that data. Now, what are you going to do with that when you're cleaning it? Maybe you need to populate that data. Maybe that is something that you can get from another data source or you know it and you can actually put it in there. That is a way you can clean that data up. Next, we have mixed numbers and letters. It may look like 831-262-2149, but that one is actually an L. And so this is just a classic case of bad data. They should all be in the same format with the phone number, but they're not. Some have dashes, some have commas, some don't have anything, and some even have letters. That's very, very messy. Next, we have email address. Now, within this one, they're all somewhat different, right? We all have different email addresses. And again, that's just a standardization, making them all the same issue. But we also have something like a non-printable character. Now, there are specific characters within computer systems that you just shouldn't be putting or really can't put in specific data types. So if this is a string, that may be a character that you shouldn't have or can't have, and that's going to mess up your data. Lastly, in the address section, we have two issues here. We have messy structure and format. So some are capitalized. So some of the data is capitalized versus not capitalized. We also have incomplete data. For example, we have Emily Renzelli Boulevard, but we don't have a number, we don't have a city, we don't have a state. There's just incomplete, and that makes it really difficult to work with that data. Now, here we have something called a data cleaning cycle. And I really like this visualization because it shows that data cleaning is not just a one-time thing. It is something that you have to continuously do. And I have and I have experienced this a lot over my years as a data analyst. Once you clean data, isn't necessarily perfectly cleaned. You kind of have to go back and clean it as you go. And it's never really perfect. It's just really usable. This cycle typically starts at the very top. So we have importing data. 
This is just bringing in data from other systems, usually through some data collection system, like a data pipeline that we talked about in the data collection lesson last time. Next, we have merging data sets. This is combining multiple data sources into one data set. Next, we have rebuilding missing data. This is where you're handling incomplete data or you're actually filling in that missing data. Next, we have standardization and normalization. Standardization is where you're making sure that the data follows a consistent format. So all the date formats are the same. For example, if we go back to this one, we can make sure that the address is all standardized. They all have an address, a city, a state, and maybe a zip code if you need. They all have the same data. Next, we have normalization. This is a little bit different because you're adjusting data to a common scale without distorting the data itself. Next, we have deduplication. And this is where you may have duplicates of data in your columns. For example, maybe we have 100 columns of Alex Freeberg, and we don't need 100 columns. It's all the exact same data. We would want to remove 99 of those to just keep the one that we actually need. Next, we have what they call verification and enrichment. This is really just data quality. You're going through and you're validating your data, making sure that your data is accurate. Then lastly, you're saving this clean data in the format that you need for your next processes, whether it's analyzing or using it in some type of product. Now, one thing I want to mention on here is that this cycle is not perfect. In fact, I usually do deduplication earlier on within this cycle, but it really depends on the data itself. Sometimes you're importing, merging, rebuilding, and then going back and getting more data and then importing, merging, and rebuilding. So this isn't a perfect cycle. This isn't exactly what you should do every time, but these are often the steps that I am taking when I'm cleaning data. The data cleaning is very specific to different tools, and I have a lot of different videos on how to exactly clean data with full projects on data cleaning in SQL and Tableau and Power BI and Python and Excel. And so if you want to learn hands-on how to actually clean data, go check out those videos because they are fantastic to learn how to actually clean data. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.